Hi, this is Reprosa. Once again, welcome to my YouTube channel, Provinciano Accountant. Uh, this session, we will be talking about, we will be discussing about uh, correction of errors. So, sa sinasabi natin, corrections of errors. Ano ba yung mga corrections of error or types of corrections of errors? Meron tayong one balance sheet or financial position errors. Second is income statement finance or financial performance errors. And the third one is mixed or both financial positions and financial performance errors. And uh, ang affected lang ng mga accounts is pakikita lamang sa balance sheet or financial errors. Let's say for example, benta tayo Nagbenta tayo ng sales on account. Ang na-record natin instead na accounts receivable, debit, ay na-debit natin ay ano, accounts payable. So, yung accounts payable at yung accounts receivable, those accounts are found in balance sheet or financial positions. So, those are errors related to balance sheets. So, another one is the income statement or financial performance errors. These errors are those errors na uh, related to uh, accounts na makikita sa income statement or statement of financial performance. Let's say, for example, um, uh, double expenses. Yung expense, instead na insurance expense, ang na-debit natin is salaries expense. So, pero uh, yung dalawang account na yun is has nothing to do or it has no effect doon sa retained earnings natin or sa net income natin. Dahil nga, uh, classification lang naman yung in, uh, naging um, errors doon. Instead na insurance expense na i-record natin, ang nagawa natin recording is salaries expense. So, yung expense natin is same pa rin yung amount but yung classifications lang ang naiba or may mali. So, yung income niya, so, the net income is not affected more so with the retained earnings ay hindi affected. So, yung sinasabi natin mixed errors, it could be an error na uh, related to balance sheet or financial position or an errors na naka-affect din sa income statement or financial performance. So, we have two types of errors na related doon sa balance sheet at performance or financial performance or income statement. We have counterbalancing error and the other one is non-counterbalancing error. Ang counterbalancing error, ito po yung mga error kung saan uh, ang effect niya, for example, uh, from the year where the error happened, uh, is ma-offset siya the following year. Let's say, for example, yung income mo this year was overstated or this year is overstated, the following year, kung hindi siya na correct or kung hindi siya nakita o before mag-close ang second year, then uh, such uh, error can be offset. Yung nga sabi natin, kung overstated yung income for this year, the following year, yung income naman is magiging understated. So, yung effect over and then under income, uh, mayroon lang siyang zero effect or uh, no effect doon sa retained earnings. Bakit pinagsasak? Bakit minimension natin yung retained earnings? Naalala nyo naman na yung income natin is sinasara natin sa retained earnings at the end of the accounting period. So, kung nagko-closing tayo, sinasara natin yung mga balance ng revenue at an expense. So, kung income siya, net income siya, yung net income na yun ay sinasara sa retained earnings. So, kaya, pag yung first period kung saan nangyari yung errors is 
nagkaroon ng overstatement of net income. Ang effect niya is overstatement of net income. So, kung hindi siya na-correct on the following year at na-close na rin yung the following year, then yung overstatement of net income will be offset or counterbalanced on the following year. So, na-counterbalance siya dun sa retained earnings. Let's take a look. Ano ba yung meaning ng counterbalancing error? Error in the financial statements, if not corrected, automatically offset its effect in the retained earnings within the lapse of two or more accounting periods. So, kung hindi natin na-correct yung uh, error na yun on the following year or on the following year before closing the books, then, ang mangyayari is ma-offset siya. Ma-offset yung error from the year 1 to year 2. Non-counterbalancing error muna tayo. Meaning lang. So, errors that if not corrected or not automatically counterbalanced or corrected in the next counting period, which result to misstatement of retained earnings. So, kung hindi siya na-correct, then, hindi talaga siya automatically maka-counterbalance. Compare kanina sa counterbalancing error, uh, yung counterbalancing error kasi kahit wala kang corrections na gagawin, uh, still, the error or the yeah, the error will automatically counterbalance. Maka-counterbalance siya. Uh, on the other hand, yung non-counterbalancing error, pag hindi na-correct, then continuous lang ang effect niya. Kumbaga, kung understated yung net income natin, then the following year, understated pa rin. So, kung overstated ang income natin dahil dun sa non-counterbalancing error, then yung the following net income is understated pa rin. So, counterbalancing error, example tayo. ABC is using cash basis of account D. On December 30, 2018, ABC sold merchandise on account. So, ano ba yung nawawala dito? Ano ba yung hindi na-record? Yung na-record natin is yung sales. So, understated yung sales natin. So, ano ba yung effect, net effect dun sa uh, net income ng 2018 prior out uh, current year na 2018 and then the succeeding year 2019 at saka ano yung effect dun sa retained earnings end of year 2019 so kung titingnan natin understated yung sales natin di ba yung sales is related to income so revenue so kung sales natin is understated uh, direct yung relationship niya sa net income so kung understated yung sales natin understated din yung net income natin in 2018. So, ano mangyayari sa 2019? Dahil nga, let's say for example, hindi na record yung sales ng 2018 dahil nga cash basis siya. Diba sabi natin sa previous discussion natin, hindi magre-record ang company kung cash basis la at wala pang cash involved. So, yung sales on account in 2018 ay walang na-record si ABC. So, therefore, yung, yung sales niya is understated. Yung net income niya on the same year is understated. Pero, nung dumating yung 2019, we're in, uh, na-collect na niya yung receivable or na-collect na yung venenta niya. So, saka lang siya magre-record ng sales. So, ang mangyayari, hindi naman talaga pertaining to 2019 yung sales which is nangyari naman talaga siya sa 2018. So, ang mangyayari sa 2019 is magkakaroon siya ng over. So, under sa 2018, over naman sa 2019, di ba sabi natin na yung income, net income, is i-close natin sa retained earnings. So, yung understatement of net income in 2018, isasara dun sa retained earnings, Tapos yung net income naman ng 2019 is isasara sa retained earnings. So therefore, yung effect ng dalawang taon is wala na. Zero effect siya sa retained earnings or yung tinatawag natin na RE. So yung RE natin in 2019 end is wala nang effect. Zero effect na siya. Next problem. 
ABC failed to record purchases made on December 30, 2018. So, napansin nyo, hindi nag-record hindi nag-record si ABC ng purchases pertaining to 2018. So, Ang nawawala dito is understated yung purchases natin. So, what will happen to the net income in 2018, 2019, and the retained earnings in 2019? So, kung understated yung purchases natin, di ba? Yung purchases is part of the cost. Part of the cost. The part of the cost, cost of sales. So, cost of sales is an expense per se. So, kung understated yung purchase natin, understated yung expense natin, so, what will happen to the net income? Ha? What will happen to the net income? Over. Over yung net income natin dahil nga understated yung cost. So, kung mas mataas yung income, mas malit yung cost, then your net income mo is overstated. So, what will happen naman? Ganyan yung sabi natin, uh, uh, offsetting lang siya. So, in 2018, dahil over siya, under naman sa 2019. So, again, dahil nga yung net income natin is sinasara natin sa retained earnings, on the following year, end of the 2019, no effect na sa retained earnings. Kasi nga, uh, counterbalancing error ang understatement of purchases. Next problem, ABC failed to include inventory out for consignment which until December 31, 2018 remain unsold. Ano ba yung mga consignment? Ito yung mga inventory kung saan binibigay mo or pinapabenta mo sa ibang uh, tindahan. Pinapakonsign mo. Kung baga pinapaangkat mo. Kaya pinapaangkat mo kung saan. Ilalagay mo muna yung Yung inventory doon, kung naibenta naman niya, i-remit niya sa inyo. So, kanino pa yung inventory? Sa ABC pa rin, siya pa rin yung may-ari ng inventory out for consignment. So, kung hindi siya naibenta, then dapat i-report pa ni ABC yung inventory na yun. So, ang nangyari? So, there is an understatement of ending inventory. hindi na report o hindi na isama ni ABC sa kanyang financial statements yung uh, goods o yung inventory na naipakonsign niya which is hindi pa naman na ibenta. So, there is an understatement of ending inventory. So, kung understatement of ending inventory, anong nangyayari doon sa net income ng 2018? Ano ba? Di ba yung ending inventory is uh, is an asset? So, di ba, naalala nyo yung proforma ng uh, income statement natin. Meron tayong uh, to, to, to compute the cost of goods sold. Sige. To compute the cost of goods sold, uh, we have the beginning inventory plus the purchases. We have the goods available for sale less ending inventory. Makukuha mo na yung cost of goods sold, yung expense. Kung Uh, understated yung ending inventory, ang mangyayari sa, sa cost of goods sold natin is over. Over. So, kung over yung cost natin, ang mangyayari sa income is under. Ayan. Under yung net income natin sa 2018. So, therefore, kung ending pinag-usapan natin is inventory, ending inventory, kung ano yung effect ng ending inventory, Ganon din yung effect dun sa net income natin. So, understated yung ending inventory in 2018, then the net income is understated. So, again, counterbalancing error. So, kung understated siya sa 2018, 2019 naman is overstated. So, therefore, counterbalance lang siya. No effect to the retained earnings at the end of 2019. So, clear. Next example, ABC failed to recognize an expired portion of the insurance expense in 2018. An expired portion. Uh, let's say, for example, ano, nagbayad si ABC ng insurance uh, for two years. For two years. So, 
nag let's say for example in January 2018 nagbayad si ABC ng insurance for 2 years 2018 2019 so ang nangyari uh, yung insurance ni ABC ay hindi pa naubos so may dalawang taon siya so dapat uh, expense lang niya is for 1 year 2018 and then half of the insurance is dapat uh, uh, asset pa rin siya in 2018. Ah, so, expense half uh, in 2018 and then assets pa rin on to, and another half is an asset in 2018. So, ang nangyari, there is an understatement of prepaid expense. There is an uh, understatement of prepaid expense. Ano yung prepaid expense? Prepaid expense is an asset account. So, kung understated yung prepaid expense, meaning overstated yung insurance expense natin. So, kung overstated yung expense, therefore, yung income natin is understated. Ayan. So, ang income natin for 2018 is understated uh, dahil nga there is an understatement of prepaid expense or overstatement of expense in 2018. So, dahil sabi nga natin, counterbalancing siya, so in 2019, overstated naman yung net income natin. Bakit kaya ganun? Kasi, inubos mo na pag-expense yung insurance in 2018. So, wala ka ng expense in 2019. So, therefore, lesser yung expense mo in 2019. So, yung income mo is over. So, Counterbalancing siya, no effect on the retained earnings at the end of 2019. Dahil sabi nga natin, yung net income is isasara natin sa retained earnings. So, yung naisara ng net income in 2018 is under and then naisara yung income in 2019 is over, then there is an offset of amounts. So, therefore, no effect in retained earnings at the end of 2019. 19. Another example is ABC failed to recognize the unearned rent income of the two years advance rent in 2018. So, ang nangyari, nagbayad si clients ng two years rent advance in 2018. So, that is good for 2018 and 2019. So, ang, ang nangyari is that in record mo na, dahil nga, let's say for example, uh, cash basis of accounting siya. So, in-record agad niya uh, income in 2018, which is, uh, there is a what? There is a understatement of deferred income or overstatement of income in 2018. Dahil lang nga, in-record mo agad lahat-lahat yung 2 years advance rent in 2018. So, therefore, yung income mo in 2019 is, 2018 is overstated dahil nga inubos mo lahat pag record yung uh, rent income for 2 years in 2018 hindi ka nag record ng uh, deferred income ano ba yung deferred income? ito yung mga uh, na receive mo na pero wala ka pa dapat rights, hindi mo pa dapat yun i-recognize dahil hindi ka pa naman nakapag render ng service for that uh, purpose. Let's say for example, dahil 2018 lang naman la, pa lang naman siya nagbayad and then 2 years yung binayaran niya. So, it is expected na 2018 and 2019. So, hindi ka pa naman nagbigay ng service for 2019. So, dapat magre-recognize ka pa ng uh, liability account which is the deferred income dito. So, deferred income is a liability account. So, therefore, yung net income natin in 2018 is overstated. So, sabi nga natin, counterbalancing error, so yung net income natin in 2019 is understated. Or, di ba, yung in year 2018, dapat mag-recognize ka na ng rent income, pero hindi ka na nag-recognize ng rent income dahil nerecognize mo na ng buo in 2018, which is supposedly dapat uh, half, one year lang in 2018 and the other year in 2019. Pero nire-record mo lahat in 2018, so nagkaroon ka ng overstatement of income in 2018, 
Pero ang net income mo naman in 2019 is understated. Kung hindi yan ay correct after closing of, retain, of the net income and retained earnings, then there is a, a zero effect on the retained earnings at the end of 2019. Another example, ABC failed to recognize the interest income for the last quarter in 2018. So, failed to, in, to recognize interest income. So, let's say for example, dapat nag, uh, nag accrue ka na hin, ng income or dapat nag-recognize ka na ng income pero ang nangyari is you failed to recognize. So, ang nangyari doon is there is an understatement of income, interest income. So, kung understated yung interest income natin, so therefore, anong nangyari doon sa 2018 natin na net income? There is an understatement of net income in 2018. Dahil nga, hindi ka pa naman nag-record ng income, supposedly dapat nag-record ka na ng income, pero hindi ka nag-recognize ng income. So, yung income mo, net income mo is understated in 2018. Saka ka lang nag-recognize ng income nung na-receive mo na in 2019. So, therefore, yung 2019 mo is overstated. Dahil nga sabi natin, counterbalancing error. So, yung return earnings at the end of year 2019 is zero effect. So, ito summary. Net effect to net income and return earnings. So, kung understated yung purchases natin in year 1, overstated. Year 2, understated. And retained earnings and of year 2, wala siyang effect. So, understated uh, deferred income or liability account, overstated yung net income natin in, in year 1 and then in year 2, understated siya. No effect naman sa retained earnings at the end of year 2. So, kung understated yung sales natin, again, there is a direct effect to the net income on the current year. So, kung understated yung sales, then understated yung net income. Pero the following year, that is overstated. Understated yung ending inventory, there is a direct effect on the net income for that current year. Then, understated yung uh, income on the year 1 and then on the year 2, overstated naman. And then, there is no effect on the retained earnings. Kung prepaid expense naman, prepaid expense, kung understated siya, understated din yung net income natin for the current year and then overstated to the following year and zero effect on the retained earnings at the end of year two or second year. And then enter state, understated of interest income, so understated din yung net income mo on the current year wherein the error happened and then on the following year, overstated naman yung net income mo, pero the effect on the retained earnings is zero. So, ano ba yung mga counterbalancing area? Yung nasabi nga natin na errors that uh, if not corrected, uh, then there, there is no automatic corrections. Hindi siya ma-offset, cannot be counterbalanced kung walang adjusting entry na gagawin. So, there's an error ko ng financial statements that automatically offset uh, in effect in retained earnings within the lapse of two accounting periods. That is that is a counterbalancing error. So, example of non-counterbalancing error, uh, ABC, in 2018, ABC uh, purchased equipment for 100000 and charged the same to expense the equipment can be used for 5 years. So, ang nangyari dito, pumili si ABC ng, ng equipment, pero, chinarge niya buo sa expense account, wherein the equipment can be used for 5 years. So, dapat nga, um, hindi mo na dapat i-expense uh, yung equipment or capital expenditures, dapat hindi siya in-expense outright dahil nga, uh, equipment can be used uh, for future or it can be used for future. So, ano ba, yung, ano ba yung entry niya dito? Yung original entry na nangyari is nagkaroon siya ng expense, debit, 100,000 and credit, cash of 100,000. Supposedly, dapat 
Ah, uh, ang nangyari dito, yung expense na 100,000, ang nangyari is there is a net income understatement. Bakit nagkaroon ng understatement of net income? Dahil nga, supposedly dapat hindi ka nag-recognize ng expense outright. So, yung net income mo is understated kasi over yung expense mo at that time. So, yun yung net income mo in 2018 is understated by 100,000. Pero nga, dahil nga meron tayong sinasabing depreciation, so mababawasan naman yung overstate, understatement ng net income. Uh, retained earnings is also understated. So, kung net income mo is understated, then yung retained earnings natin is understated. So, asset account and contra asset account is also understated. Dahil supposedly dapat nag-record ka ng equipment, pero ang in-record mo is expense. So, nagkaroon ka ng understatement ng asset account and the contra asset account. Ano ba yung contra asset account? Ito po yung accumulated depreciation kung saan uh, in a more uh, dinidepreciate mo yung uh, equipment over its useful life so ano naman yung useful life by the way so yung useful life ito yung po yung uh, kung kailan o kung hanggang saan mo pwede gamitin yung equipment mo pwede pa siyang magamit so it should be the entry kung bumili ka ng equipment it should be the entry Equipment, credit, cash. So, kanina kasi expense. Ngayon, dapat yung entry natin is equipment. Equipment of 100,000, cash of 100,000. So, ito po yung nangyari dun sa non-counterbalancing error po natin. So, di ba sabi natin kanina, magre-recognize dapat tayo ng equipment. Ito, recognize mo yung equipment natin. So, in 2018, kung kinorek natin or kung in 2019, kung kinorek natin yung 2019, let's say for example, bago pa natapos yung 2019, alam na natin na mayroon tayong error dun sa 2018 na purchase of equipment. Pero ang nangyari, <coughs> hindi natin na correct yung 2018, na correct natin sa 2019. So, ang gagawin natin, eh, direct kung, uh, I-recognize muna natin yung equipment. Spy sa isa. So, equipment natin is 100,000. I-credit naman natin yung retained earnings na 100,000. Saan nakuha natin yung 100,000 na retained earnings? Yung expense na 100,000 na dinebit in 2018. So, ang nangyari, nagkaroon ng uh, understatement of net income in 2018 and which is the net income then is uh nireflect doon sa uh, retained earnings. However, hindi pa yun na isama yung depreciation. So, kung isasama natin, kung magre-record tayo ng depreciation in 20, kung supposedly dapat nakapag-record tayo ng depreciation in 2018, so dapat yung net income natin, yung effect of net income, 100 minus 20,000, dapat meron tayong uh, income dapat na ibabalik doon. So, nagkaroon tayo ng understatement of net income in 2018 na 80,000. Dahil nga, over, uh, nagkaroon tayo ng overstatement na 100,000 and understatement naman na 20,000. Saan pa natin nakuha yung 20,000? Yung depreciation na 100, yung cost ng, dip, ng asset na 100,000 over the useful life of 5 years, yung depreciation expense natin is 20,000. Kung nai-record natin ng tama yung equipment natin in 2018, so dapat daw nakapag-record tayo ng uh, depreciation in 2018. So, yung net effect ng net income natin in 2018 is understated na 20,000. However, kung hindi natin na-correct in 2019 yung, yung error, magkakaroon pa rin siya ng error, hindi siya nagka-counterbalance. Kasi nga, uh, kasi yung affected naman niya is yung real accounts. Real accounts. Tapos ito, yung, yung sa depreciation, hindi, kung hindi tayo nag-record, so wala rin tayong i-record na depreciation in 20, 
2019. So, dapat ito mag-recognize ka ng depreciation and then accumulated depreciation also. Dito sa 2018, dapat mag-recognize ka ng 20 na accumulated depreciation. In 2019, mag-recognize ka rin ng expense depreciation of 20,000 and then accumulated depreciation of 20,000. So, therefore, yung effect yung effect ng retained earnings natin at the end of 2019 uh, there is a uh, uh, understatement of what? understatement of 60,000 so kung hindi natin na-recognize yung yung correction in 2019 then meron tayong uh, adjustment sa retained earnings na 60,000 pesos. So, I hope guys, uh, uh, this video uh, aids uh, or gives you clarification on retained earnings. Hopefully, uh, naibigay ko po yung gusto nyo. Uh, thank you once again. And please don't forget to subscribe